Chakatyar Katyar from Hope Fertility, New Delhi, India. And in today's video, I will be taking up questions from patients who were earlier coming for treatment with me regularly and now they are extremely distressed that they cannot continue with their planned treatments because of the COVID-19 virus. I will also be taking up a couple of questions of a very technical nature from my friends and colleagues who are doctors. So let us get started. The first question I have is from Shikha. And Shikha wants to know, is it a good idea to try for a natural pregnancy at this time? Okay, Shikha, it is perhaps not the best of time to plan for a natural pregnancy because of many reasons. The government of India wants all of us to stay indoors. And if you become pregnant, it will be necessary for you to make at least a couple of trips to the doctor for your examination. You will need to get started on medicines which will be appropriate for you. You will be required to undergo blood tests, which will mandate a visit to a laboratory. And at two weeks after the pregnancy has been diagnosed, you will need to go for an ultrasound to confirm that the heartbeat of the baby has come, that the baby is doing fine, that the pregnancy is inside the uterus. There are many things which are important and need to be seen from the first ultrasound. Now, because of all these reasons, if you have been waiting for some time now, there is no harm in waiting for like a couple of weeks more and then once the lockdown is over and things are back to normal then of course you should try for a pregnancy. My next question is from Darshna. Darshna has written that she has polycystic ovaries and she was taking medicines like metformin. Now what should she do? Should she continue with the medicines or not? Okay, Tarshna. It is good that you know that you have got polycystic ovaries. Now, patients who are having polycystic ovaries are started on medicines like metformin or glycophage or glycomet. And the purpose of these medicines is that they are insulin sensitizers. Insulin sensitizers are medicines which, to put it in layman's terms, decrease the polycysticness of the ovaries and increase your chances of making eggs. Now these medicines take quite some time to start showing a positive effect in the body and it takes up to two months for the effect of these medicines to come. So if you have already been taking these medicines and they are not causing you any side effects, then it is important that you continue with these medicines and do not stop them because if you will stop them and then you will need to restart your treatment, it will take time for the effect to come again. These medicines are pretty safe, they have been around for quite a number of years and uh, it will be wiser to continue with them than to stop them now. All right. Now my next question is from Nazia and Nazia has mentioned that her doctor was planning IUI or intrauterine insemination for her for unexplained infertility and what should she do now? All right, Nazia, I understand that you were quite keen on getting started with your treatment and IUI gives good results over a natural cycle. But um, because obviously you are not able to visit your fertility specialist and the IUI cannot be done this cycle, it is better that you only continue with medicines like folic acid and any other supplementary medicines which you were taking for pre-existing medical conditions like uh, thyroid medication or medication for polycystic ovaries or if you are hypertensive or if you are diabetic then all those medicines can continue but no uh, fertility treatment is advisable at this time. I have also received many queries from patients who were planning IVF treatments with their doctors and believe me it is best to stay at home as of now and not get started with any treatments. So Dr. Ritu wants to know, and this question is a continuation of what I have answered in the previous question, that what is the recommendation by the international societies regarding the fertility treatments? So Dr. Ritu, uh, we have got a couple of very good fertility societies in India like uh, ISAR, Indian Society of Assisted Reproduction and um, Fertility Society of India. And also we are getting recommendations from the international societies abroad like the American Society of Reproductive Medicine 
and ESHRI, which is the European Society of Human Reproduction and Endocrinology. Now, all these societies are as of now saying that infertility treatments may they be ovulation inductions, which is the simplest treatment, or IUI or IVF treatments, should be postponed for a time period till we feel that the COVID-19 virus scare has settled down sufficiently that we are not exposing patients to the virus by virtue of calling them to our clinics for treating them. It is important to understand that most fertility treatments are not emergencies. As of now, only those patients who have got medical emergencies like severe stomach aches or appendicitis or cancer patients who are taking chemotherapy or radiotherapy or people who have undergone accidents or have fractures are encouraged to come out of their houses and visit the hospitals. Of course, apart from the patients who are having COVID-19 type of symptoms, all other patients, including infertility treatments, have been decreased to be non-emergency treatments and such patients should stay at home in the security and safety of their homes and not come outside. However, there are some fertility patients who are considered to be emergency patients. Now, who can these patients be? These patients are some unfortunate patients who have got cancer and they need to start with their cancer treatments. And before they start with their cancer treatments, they would like to store or freeze either a part of their ovarian tissue or their eggs or their sperms before they take chemotherapy or radiotherapy because we know that cancer treatments like chemotherapy or radiotherapy can damage the germ cells like your eggs and your sperms. So in such patients, what we do is first freeze the gametes, the eggs or the sperms as much as we think we need to give future fertility chances to the patient and then we start their cancer treatments. So only patients who need to start their cancer treatments and who want to freeze their eggs or sperms are advised to go to the hospital and get their fertility treatments done and all other patients are required to stay at home. Now my next question is from Arushi. And Arushi has written that she is 43 years old and she was waiting to start her treatment. Her AMH, her anti mullerian hormone is already low and she is wondering what all this waiting will do to her fertility chances. Arushi, my heart goes out to you. I completely understand your concern. But you must understand that the COVID-19 virus might take some amount of time but it will go away. But your fertility will not go away even though you are 43 years old you will be better off postponing your cycle for such amount of time as it is safe to come out of the house and to go for your treatment to make you feel a little more encouraged about the piece of advice i have just given let me tell you that there was a big study conducted by the american society of reproductive medicine in which they found in a group of around 88 women that there was a no decrease in the live birth take home baby rate in IVF women who were more than 40 years old who for various reasons had to postpone their treatment for a few months. So these patients were forced to delay their treatments for four to six months for various reasons but the take home baby rate in these women who were forced to delay their treatments and in another group of women who continued with their treatment as they had scheduled, there was no difference in the take home baby rate. So please stay at home and stay safe. My next question is from Smita who has written to me from Dubai. Now Smita had frozen her embryos with us in September and she has many questions. The first question is, when she comes to India, when the COVID-19 virus is over, Will it be mandatory for her to test for the COVID-19 virus before starting the treatment? So Smita, as of now, there is no such recommendation that all patients will have to be tested for the virus before starting their treatment. As of now, the government of India has made it mandatory 
for us to check every patient for four communicable diseases and they are HIV or the AIDS virus, the hepatitis B virus, the hepatitis C virus and we have to test for syphilis. These are the four mandatory infectious disease tests which we have to do for the patient and for the husband but as of now there is no recommendation that you have to be mandatory screened for the COVID-19 virus when you come for your frozen egg, frozen embryo transfer later. Now our second question is, is there any risk of her embryos getting infected from other patients embryos which might be infected and they are stored together? Alright Smitha, so although all the studies which we have are preliminary, there is no current data to suggest that one patient's embryos might get infected from another infected patient's embryos because embryos as of now are not known to get infected. So I hope that puts your heart at ease. Smitha also wants to know that is there any risk of malformation in the baby if it is born to an infected embryo? So Smitha, as of now, there have been no known cases of vertical transmission of the virus from the mother to the baby. This such a kind of transmission is called a vertical transmission. And as of now, there are no studies to suggest that there can be any kind of birth defects in the baby because of any vertical transmission because of the virus. My next question is from Dr. Anuradha who wants to know, can gametes get infected? So Dr. Anuradha, as of now, there have been no known cases of pyremia in the body and the virus has as of now not yet been traced from any seminal fluid samples or from the follicular fluids from eggs of patients who have been extracted. So basically what we can say is gametes cannot be infected. Dr. Kapil wants to know what is the recommendation regarding a donor egg cycle or a donor embryo cycle. Dr. Kapil, as of now, it is not recommended that we do any donor egg cycle or we do any donor embryo cycle. Any embryos which we already have, as of now, we are not transferring into the patients. We are not doing any frozen egg or frozen embryo cycles also. We are informing our patients that once embryos have been frozen or once the eggs have been frozen, they are frozen in time and space. There is no deterioration in the quality of the egg or the embryo once it has been frozen. So waiting for a couple of months for better times to come will not have any negative impact. You feel safe and secure that once the eggs or embryos are frozen with us, they will remain the same and we will transfer them whenever it is the best possible time for you. Okay, with that, I come to the end of today's video. I think that I have answered all the questions which you all have been asking to me by email, by phone, by calling. I have a very small message to all of you. Stay safe, stay at home, 